Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Kelly, this is a life well spent and on this channel I document my financial journey. So we talk things, um, budget, um, I've done some debt payoff stuff, um, I'm hoping to actually get into some investing stuff soon. And I realize I keep saying that, I just keep putting off the <laughs> information because sometimes life just gets in the way. Um, I do, however, use my real numbers in my budget. Um, and so when I get to the end of the month um, and I close out my budget or I'm at the beginning of the month, that is exactly what I plan to spend and exactly what I have spent. And another thing that I do is create these weekly transaction videos. Um, and I do that because it helps keep me honest. I think it's easier to track, um, you know, where my money's going and what I'm spending it on and how I'm doing with each of my categories, because I end up paying for so many things digitally. And this has just been a tool that has helped me keep on track. And, um, I just kind of every couple of days go into my budget and, um, track those, uh, transactions. I manually enter them, which I know some people kind of seem or think that that seems kind of tedious. And, and for some people, maybe it is. Um, but it's the act of doing it that keeps it sort of the forefront in my mind. Um, and then I feel like I do a better job with not spending money that I end up regret spending, re end up regretting to have spent. Um, so yeah, so let's get into it. It is week one of August. Um, it's August 9th today. So this will cover the transactions from the first uh, through the 7th of August. All right. So I am once again outside. Um, so the wind might be blowing a little bit. It is hurricane day. It's August 9th, Friday. So this is the day that Hurricane Debbie has come up the coast and dropped an absolutely astronomical amount of rain. Like I, we were predicted to get any, like almost eight inches, I think. And that's insane. I don't know how much we ended up getting. The rain seemed kind of light, but steady a lot of the day. And then there would be times when I'd look outside and I mean, it was just pouring. So I don't ultimately know what we ended up with. Um, and there's probably more rain coming. I think there's supposed to be rain in like an hour, but as of right now, I don't know if it's easy to see. I think it's behind the cloud, but the sun has peaked out. So I am on my porch again, just to enjoy the sunshine and enjoy the outside. Plus I had to take a class. Um, I've been taking this class for work and, um, every class is like, or every unit is like two days in a row and we're on camera and you have to be on camera the whole time. So just kind of sitting there and ugh, I was, I didn't, I couldn't really risk the internet connection out of my porch. And I mean, it was raining. I couldn't come out anyway, but other days I would have the ability to, if I could make sure the internet would stretch, but it's probably okay for like general internet searching, but not like like live stream video. I just saw a hummingbird whiz by. Anyway, okay. So down to business. So um, this is my transaction log. Um, I actually, if you see, I started on row 451 because I, I'm doing something a little bit different this year with my budget. And um, I'm actually putting all the transactions like one by one in a row, but like I absolutely cannot be bothered to... Um, sit and like keep making extra rows to add things, um, nor can I be bothered to scroll through everything. So what I'll do is at the end of the month, I will highlight everything um, for August and I'll just hide it. And then come December, when I want to look at like my spending for the year, I will, um, you know, unhide all of it. But I'm also like working on building tables and stuff like that out, which can deal with the stuff that's hidden. Um, so anyway, that being said, I actually have my bill set up to pay everything out in the first week of the month. So this transaction video usually has a lot of that. Um, it's got all of my bills, um, everything that's like kind of a monthly um, subscription or something that I move. Ooh, here in the birdies, they definitely are getting, I don't know if you can hear that cardinal back there, but he's just singing away. Um, they're enjoying the hour of time we got to. 
the hour of sunshine or just not rain, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so I do that. Um, I actually was able to do that because I took some time um, probably after my debt payoff. I'm not sure. I've been doing this for a while, so I'm not entirely sure when it actually started, but um, I took some time and took some you know, I guess maybe it probably as I was like building up a bigger emergency fund, I would say, mm, excuse me, or maybe I even did do it during that payoff. I don't know. Anyway, I kept putting a little bit more aside in my checking account so that, um, I was able to start the month with a month's worth of income. So I do a zero based budget, which means every dollar that I earn that month has a plan before I even get it into my bank account. So I budget off of that one month. Now I do have like other like short term savings and sinking funds and things like that. And then I, if I need that money, I just move it into that account or I pay it out of the account that it's sitting in either way is fine. But anyway, um, I like to start my month because I know that I'm going to spend within that, that amount of money. And so it's easier for me to have that, to think of that money as the money I have for, to spend for the month. And then when I basically get paid, I just replenish the money that's in there. Right. Um, I really cannot be bothered. I've said this a million times. <laughs> I really cannot be bothered to sit here and play the game of like, oh, well, I should probably wait to pay that because I have a bunch of money in the checking account and I want to make sure that, you know, that check clears before I send that one out and this and that. And like, I just feel like you have to keep way more, pay way more attention to things um, that way. And I, I just can't be bothered to play that game. So everything comes out, um, either on the first of the month. And then there's a couple things that were like smaller. I just saw a bird fly behind me. I'm hoping it showed up on camera. I could see it in like the reflection of the computer. Um, so all of my, like my mortgage, my utilities, all that stuff that comes out of my account, I pay it on the first. And I can do that actually because of my, fortunately my, um, I'm trying to find that cardinal. Like I hear it and I feel like I, Oh, that just found him. He's sitting right up there in the tree. Cardinals after the rain are so gorgeous and their feathers somehow just get so much brighter. And I don't really know what it is, but they do. Anyway, I really hope you can hear them. I bet you probably can't because I think microphones, I'm using the computer's microphone and I know they try to eliminate extra uh, noise and stuff like that. And I guess that would be considered that. Anyway. <laughs> Um, my utilities come towards the end of the prior month. So I guess technically like that would be July's bill, but I pay it out in August. So I incorporate it or I consider it to be August. Ooh, there's a blue day that just blew. I'm really distracted today, obviously. Um, blue Jay just went by. So maybe you'll hear him crackling in the back. They sound pretty awful. They sound like someone's dying when they go off. All right. So mortgage. Comes out first day of the month, 688.77. That is the last payment of that amount. Next month is like 640. So, whoa. Those dark clouds are rolling in. I'll try to finish this video before it dumps on me again. Um, my uh, PMI dropped off, so my payment is going to be a little bit different. I feel like I just felt water on me. Um, so it's, it's like 640 something, I think, um, between like no more PMI, but having to pay increases in taxes and insurance or whatever. So it comes out to like being 40 bucks less, whatever. I'll take it. Gas 2115. I don't use my stuff on my stove all that much. I definitely don't use my oven because I don't have air conditioning in my house. Um, I have like a window unit in my bedroom, but I don't have anything downstairs and it's just, it's too hot to use the stove. <laughs> I've been using um, the toaster oven until it died. And I'll get there in a second. I'll have to talk about that because I have a lot of expenditures right now in some areas. Um, 132.30 in sewer. Really not pleased about this. Um, ultimately, I think it ended up being my fault. So it cost me like $6.30 in fees, which makes me even more annoyed. Um, so 
I feel like it's 20% my bank, 80% me. So my, um, my bank has had problems with their bill payer. Like, I mean, it got me angry enough that I decided to finally open up a high yield savings account and move all of my money over like that. It shouldn't have taken that, but it did. I was like, fine, you know what? I'm done. I'm so done. I'm just, I'm just so done. You don't get to make a lot more. You don't get to make that much money off me anymore. Cause like, this is ridiculous. I had consistently had problems. I shouldn't even say consistently a couple of times. Um, the first time that I had an issue with the bill payer paying to the sewer company, I got a letter from the sewer company that said they were no longer accepting um, payments at their PO box um, that you had to mail them directly to what, the address, whatever. And I'm almost positive that at that time I went in and I changed the address so that it was going to go to the appropriate place. And my company, my bank at some point had gotten a new bill payer. And I don't remember if it was before or after that address change. Anyway, they took the money out of my account and they kept the money out of my account. So I assumed the bill was being paid because presumably if they weren't accepting the check, it would go back into my account. Right. So like I would look and be like, yep, money went out for that. Yep. Money went out for that. Well, it just kind of happened to sort of accidentally click into an email, um, from them. It was like my monthly bill or whatever. And I mean, I usually opened it and it said zero because I paid it before the bill was actually due. Cause it's just a flat rate. And, um, I ended up like, just, I, I bought a, like I, I opened it, I think, because like I accidentally was looking at one email and accident, like I hit next and that's the one that popped up. And it said that I owed like 160 something. 200 something maybe even. And I was like, what? I don't owe anything. What are you talking about? And I went back in and I thought, and like, you know, because I do track every week, I thought, I mean, I look at my bank statement all the time, just double check and make sure I have all my transactions and all of that stuff. So I thought, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I know that money went out and I never saw it go back in. So I reached out to the sewer company and reached out to the bank and we went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And suffice it to say the company, the new company that they were using made the error. They kept cutting checks and sending them to the wrong address. And I said, and so like the sewer company was like, Hey, we never got the check. Okay, fine. And the bank was like, Hey, we sent the check. And I was like, there's a problem here somewhere. I said, they never got the checks. You say you sent the checks. Like I can see the money left my bank. Who is holding my monthly, my $63 for like three months, probably somebody has to have that money because nobody gave it back to me. I want it back. And, um, you know, so it took somebody to like kind of elevate it a couple of times and then they finally figured out what happened and they were like, oh. and I will say the only reason I can't say for sure, if I change the address, um, I'm almost positive I did. And I, you know, I kind of remember doing it, but when the money doesn't get accepted, which is what was happening, it was like, it was being rejected. They, the, the, the bill pay company removes them as a possible bill payer. So you don't pay it again. And so there's no way I couldn't like look it up. Right. Like I couldn't even see them as like a, a payer or a payee anymore. So there was no way for me to like be able to say 100%. Yes. Look, I've changed it, but I'm pretty sure I did, but okay. Let's assume I didn't. Um, anyway, they finally get to the back like, the, yo, yeah, here, look, we're, we're still sending it to the wrong address. And then, so I went in and I was like, okay, I will change it. Like I will, I will make sure that it, I it's changed. And I look in there and I'm like, but it is different. Like it is the right address now. So, and I thought, you know what? Like, I don't know. I maybe entered it back in, like created it again. I don't know. Like who knows at this point. And so they sent another check. We tested it out again. And the, I would say the sewer company was really great about working with the, working with me on it. They didn't, they waived all the fees and stuff because I was like, oh. so then my bank mailed the check again. Once again, pay got eliminated bank or a sewer company did not have the, the check. 
and this whole time I was like, and I have to wait like two weeks for it to clear anyway. So then, and the money goes, but this time the money actually goes back in my account. And I said, okay, what gives? This is unacceptable. We have now tried to do this how many times? And you keep screwing it up. And they were like, well, that's because the address, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, no. I'll grant you the original one. I could not say for sure if I changed the address. I think I did, but I don't know for sure. I absolutely know for sure that I put the right address in like three weeks ago when I went to make this new account because that was the problem supposedly before. So I absolutely know that I have the right address in there. So they do a little bit more digging and they realize that like somewhere, somehow their systems are pulling the old address. Well, that's what happened. So we deleted that old address. This will never happen again. Well, guess what had happened again? I was like, you have got to be kidding me. And then I am hearing, ooh, ooh, big old carpenter bee. Don't you dare. You go away. He just went in the hole that he's making for himself. Anyway, go through the whole thing again. Different people this time. And I have like the old, the old like email conversation. And I was like, no, no, it's right. It is correct. I put it in there correctly. And I was like, I even like, I was quoting things. I'm like, you can look at my past things if you want. And like, you know, you're telling me it's in here wrong. I'm telling you one, it's not in there wrong. And two, because again, like it was both all going to the right place for a year and a half now. And two, you guaranteed me that it was, that that bad address was eliminated. So how did it get sent there again? So anyway, furious at this point, absolutely furious. And, um, so that's the point where I was like, forget it. I'm moving my money. Like I'm not, my checking stuff is also set up because all my bill pay stuff is still, um, set up through them. And truly I don't mind. They don't really make any money off my checking account. Um, so yeah, I, uh, livid, absolutely livid dealing with that nonsense. So we have, um, it happened again. We set it up again. I paid it, I think one month to see like if it goes and I, I honestly, I don't have the memory for it anymore. I don't remember if I did just do one month to like make sure it went before I set up recurring or if I thought I set up recurring and I didn't. So I, I was just clearly careless in July and at the beginning of July, my niece was visiting and, um, it took me a while. See, this is why I try to do my weekly transactions because this is what ends up happening. Things get a little bit haywire. So, um, I missed it somehow. And so it was late and I got a late fee. And so that's two months plus a late fee. So that's fun. Water, um, 1898. I'm so surprised. Um, because I feel like when I was here, I hosed things down a lot. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much just kind of the flat rate. It's not really a flat rate, but there's a minimum usage and that's the minimum usage and the minimum cost. Electric 5896. Um, that was definitely helped by the fact that I was the two hottest weeks of the year I was at my mom's, um, internet, $58. That's just a flat rate. Um, fidelity 55 or 55, $500. That's um, my Roth IRA, $70 and 83 cents to my brokerage account and a hundred dollars to a brokerage account for my niece. My mother gave me, um, $20. That's her share, um, of our shared subscriptions and $50 is her share of, um, our contribution to my niece's, uh, brokerage account, my 4185 to the YMCA. That's the gym I go to, um, which is kind of expensive for a gym. I'll grant you, but, um, it includes a pool and I do like to swim now it gets hard in the summertime. So I'm actually considering next summer, seeing if I can put my Y membership on pause in the summer months and do a membership instead to some of the outdoor pools. Like I think it just would be more enjoyable to swim in the outdoor pool in the summertime. Um, 
thirty-five dollars um, is my mom's contribution to her cell phone. The phone's in my name. She has a line on mine. And then I transferred seventeen dollars uh, to my Nittany Lion Club sinking fund, one hundred and fifty-five dollars to my subscriptions, and fifty-nine dollars to my car insurance. And I've talked about my subscriptions before. This is really not the amount I need every month, but because we've been canceling so many things, like I'm not positive exactly how much I need to have in there. So I'm just, I figure I will take stock of it again in December um, for the upcoming year. Um, my uh, Apple, that's my iCloud, it's $299. Uh, my cell phone, $7170. Um, progressive, I had to pay for my car insurance this month. I pay, I pay it twice a month. Um, in August and in February. So it was $368. This month was a garbage month. So this is $42. And then I spent $131 and 42 cents at Sam's Club on something. This is connected to my comment a little bit earlier about my um, gas bill and not using so much on it because it's too hot. So what I've typically been doing in the summertime, um, I will make like toast and if I want to bake something or reheat something, I do it in a toaster oven. And about a week ago ish, I guess, when did I buy that? And eight, two. Yeah. It's probably around July 30th, 31st. Um, I was making toast in the toaster oven because a, my toaster started toasting like really unevenly and was kind of going on the fritz. So I said, you know what? I'll get rid of this. Do my toaster oven because it can toast and it's fine. So then I started doing that. Now this toaster oven is every bit of 15 years old, every bit of, and it was toasting something one day. And I think I went to, yeah, I don't know, maybe like go get my tea out of the other room or something. And I came back in and I'm like, why do I smell? Why does something smell like electrical fire or burning plastic or something, you know, and I'm looking around and I'm looking like, there's nothing near this thing that could like, it wasn't like, you know, there was a plastic bag sitting on top that was melting or like any, you know, whatever. So there's some kind of something. And I was like, I'm not messing with that. So got rid of that and um, I needed a replacement. So I've been eyeing this air fryer for a while and it's a Ninja foodie air fryer, toaster oven combination-y thing. Um, and I was eyeing it for a while and I thought, you know, like, I just don't really have the room for it. Now it's really cool. It's one of the ones that like tips up and stores vertically. So you don't have to take up as much counter space. And I thought, you know, like an air fryer is just going to be just one more thing. Like I, I can do without, I can do without, I can do without. And then the things that I was using to be able to do without, kind of all took crap on me. So I was like, well, I guess now's the time because it's going to replace my toaster. It's going to replace, um, my toaster oven. I can use it to bake in. It's just one more place I have to bake. Um, so I don't necessarily have to keep the oven on all the time. So I guess that's what I'm doing. And it was $30 off. Um, and yeah, I paid one thirty one forty two for it. And then I also picked up some food at Sam's $40 and 99 cents worth. Um, I bought pencil tips for my, um, Apple pencil. So mostly because initially I, I didn't realize this is my Apple pencil. I didn't realize that these actually screwed off. And so I went to like use it and I just saw like the inside part and that kind of panicked me a little bit. Um, and I went like searching for it. I couldn't find it anywhere. And I was like, I swear I just had it. It has to be here. And then the more research I did, um, I saw that like you could replace them because after a while, apparently they get like kind of dolled out and they need to be replaced. Or in the case of mine, like I unscrewed it and accidentally getting it, I think probably getting it in and out of the thing that it stores in. And, um, so I thought, you know what, like, I'll just get replacements because I can't find this one. I'm going to need at least that one. And then this will help me if they, you know, if they break, if I lose another one, whatever. And of course, as soon as I order them, I found the one that was missing. I screwed it back on and I was like, oh, we're good for now. But anyway, I have them. They're backups. I'm okay with it. 
Um, went to Walmart, spent $21.48 on a water bottle that's supposed to help keep things as cold as possible for when I'm kayaking, because guess what? A bottle sitting there in the sun on the boat warms up pretty quickly. So um, I wanted to get something from a brand that I knew was pretty good about keeping things cold for longer. Uh, and I got my mother's birthday card. I also, when I was at Sam's, um, spent $36.76 I got gas, um, pretty much because it was going to be the best place to get it. And there was a massive storm coming. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get it now rather than later. Um, I went to Walmart and returned a cooler. So I got this cooler to do some trail magic with. And I mean, it's a monster cooler. I actually really liked it. Um, it was expensive to fill. It was like $50 worth of ice just to fill it. But I think that, um, it would be really great for specific things. Um, and I ultimately decided, I think it would be great to camp with, but it ultimately was just too big to be able to fit in my car. And then it really gets to be kind of unwieldy for one person to be able to maneuver because it's so big. Like when it's full, it's too heavy. And like, I don't think there's any way, shape or form those handles would actually like stay on if you were trying to grab them by the handles. So I was a little worried about it not being that functional after all. So return it to Walmart, got $104.94 back. It's actually $150 cooler, but it was on sale for $99.99 when I bought it. So um, I then went to Lowe's. I spent $45.55. I got a ladder. Um, it's a little step ladder. A, I don't actually have one for my house. I've been, been using my mother's, um, which is why I just kind of decided to bite the bullet. But I'm also going to use it um, when I kayak because it's an easy, it's got like this little um, platform that I can kind of set the kayak on while I'm adjusting and trying to get it up on top of my roof. Went to Little Caesar, spent $11.70 on food because I was starving. And that was like, seems like a lot, but I mean, that was pizza, crazy bread and sauce. And that was three meals for me. Probably could have been four, but I was super hungry when I bought it. So I was eating a little bit more. Um, giving fund. I put $50 in my giving fund. That's the fund. Um, I actually, it down a little bit lower. I put $50 in and then I put the 104 back in because that's where I, the stuff, the cooler that I bought at Walmart, I pulled that out of that giving fund. So put it back. <laughs> uh, plus the 50. I'm doing $50 a month until, uh, until it gets back up to a thousand, which is where I like to keep it. I might in November, um, we'll see kind of how the money susses out, but I might then max it out because November is a three pay month for me. So that might be one of the things I do with that third pay. I already know um, I've, I've put the extra thousand into my Roth IRA that needs to go in there. So I can't add any there. Um, so what I'll probably do is use that money. I mean, that would have been $500 right there. So I'll use that money to then, um, add into my sinking funds that I've spent out of that I want to replenish. So, um, went to Wendy's, spent $10 and 15 cents. Um, I used a gift card for that. I used my court funds gift card, <laughs> which I get, Oh yeah, I did put it in there. I used that as extra income. So I included it there. Um, Ten dollars and fifteen cents, which is what I spent at Wise's. Went to Giant, which is another grocery store. Bought some groceries. Nineteen dollars and five cents. Just some odds and ends that I did not get otherwise um, at Sam's because I didn't need like a bulk amount of it. Um, this is just an entry that transfers the refund over to my giving fund so that it is in the right spot. And there you have it. Those are my transactions so far <laughs> for the first week of August. Um, and again, that's going to be the bulk of my transactions kind of from here on out. It's pretty much just discretionary spending. Um, you know, all of my housing bills are paid for. I will be buying gas for my car. I will be buying food um, to eat. Now I will try to eat up the foods that I have in my house. I'm going to see about doing like a pantry challenge or something to see if I can't like start, you know, working through some of that stuff. But we'll see. Um, with that in mind, it'll be, yeah, I think it's probably a good idea to work through some of the stuff in my freezers and whatnot. So we'll go from there, try to eliminate and then not constantly restock. I think that sometimes is my issue, but 
most of the things that I'll be buying, I think are going to be like fruit and vegetable related and go from there. So we're about ready to get back into the swing of things with the school year. Teachers come back, not next week, but the following week. Um, so if things start getting really, really like structured and organized again, I think, I think that will help me continue to, to hone that and, and to stay structured and stay organized with everything. Um, so leave a comment down below. Let me know. Do you track your finances? How do you do it? Are you using an app? Do you use a spreadsheet, something like this? Do you just kind of check in every once in a while? Do you have like alerts when you've gone over so much or you you know, checking has gone under to some degree? How do y'all do it? Comment down below. Let me know if you're still with me. Thanks so much for watching. table almost tipped over. If you're still with me, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. All right. So